childhood's over in the moment you know you're gonna die. Greetings, gentlemen. The black pill is not supposed to make you feel better. That's what the blue pill is for. To put you back to sleep so you can continue your servitude to the system. The black pill is supposed to make you aware. It's like black coffee. No cream, no sugar. Which is why the black pill will never be popular. Blue pill is very popular. All you gotta do is look around and you'll find it in movies, music videos, television, advertisement, etc. It's very popular. So when you take the black pill, and add some sugar to it. When you take the black pill and you add some cream to it, it becomes more palatable for those who listen and it becomes more popular. However, those who do so are sentencing you to a lifetime of slavery. On the other hand, the black pill that has not been tampered with is the only door to our liberation. And when you understand that, then you take the truth for the truth's sake and you don't care how many subscribers or followers you have. Because when you're saying something that is of lesser value, you'll get more people to listen to it. And in this video we're gonna use Blackpill to examine the system we're living in as well as its sales agents. You see, when you take our system and you peel off its social layers such as creed, race, color, social status and dogmas, national heritage, all you're gonna find left is hierarchy. And then you'll realize there is an equivalent to that system in nature amongst insects. I'm talking about ant colony. You see, in ant colony, everybody knows their place. You have workers, you have soldiers, and you have the queen. And she represents the core of the colony because she produced offspring. Soldiers provide protection and keep other working ants in line, while the working ants provide labor and maintenance to the colony. The parallels are so obvious that I don't need to point them out. When one colony becomes overpopulated, it begins to expand until reaching other colony and the war begins. The colony that wins the war is the one that kills the queen. But regardless of the winner, the structure of any ant colony remains the same, only different ants. Because ants don't have free will, they simply do what they're born to do, they know their place in a colony, and they're not aware of a social construct that I mentioned before. Most importantly, they don't have free will. They only know their obligations to the colony, and they're ready to kill or be killed to protect it. However, we as human beings do have free will, which is why our system requires something more in order to persuade us to accept our obligations to the system, so we can spend the rest of our lives in a blind obedience, providing, protecting, and maintaining the system. Distraction is one of the best ways to keep us in line, because we need to be happy providers. We need to believe in a system as the only true way of life, which is why we have such an abundance of cheap entertainment, to make us less aware of our slavery. Our usefulness to the system can be summoned in free letter P, provision, protection, and procreation. And as long as we are fulfilling those requirements, we are considered to be a good members of society, i.e. system. Personal property is yet another illusion that system pulls over our eyes to make us feel more comfortable in our chains. You see, your ownership is only illusion. System can take anything away from you. Your kids are not your kids, they belong to the system. They are the new generation of working ants. And if you are unable to provide them with food and shelter, the system will. And if you decline to go to war and protect the system, you're gonna end up behind bars because you're no longer useful. If you fail to provide, protect and procreate, you'll be put to shame by the system through the usage of so-called traditional values that you need to cherish. And no matter how many fancy words we use, it all boils down to free peas. You need to protect your country, your nation, your race. You need to start a family so that the nation can prosper by strength in numbers. And if the occasion arose, you need to be willing to prove real patriotism by throwing yourself into the meat grinder that others will profit from. Provide, protect, and procreate. That's what it all means. In short, Triple P. Sadly, women have been reduced to sales agents of the system. And I don't really care about how things used to be. Unless you have a time machine, that argument falls flat. Women are usually not aware of this, on a conscious level that is, but 
they've been successfully molded into sales agents over decades of pandering and subliminal messages. This of course didn't happen overnight. The triple P doesn't apply to them because they are agents of the system and their main task is to ensure male obligingness to the triple P and therefore the system. They stimulate male production, procreation and protection by demanding resources, family and of course protection of the family as well as the resources. You know how they say women and children first, not because they're weaker but because they are more valuable to the system. Women are agents and children are future ants or agents. Successful agent is one that makes a man put his name on a dotted line, signing a contract with the system in a form of marriage where a man vows his loyalty to the system and a woman as its representative. And if a man fails his triple P obligations, the contract will be cancelled in her favor of course because she represents the system. She will require assets of a man and the fruits of their procreation on the behalf of the system so she is free to close a new contract with another man that can produce more. People call this hypergamy but it's really an upgrade. Men that do not apply to Triple P are not the only group that's going to be ostracized and shamed by cultural requirements i.e. system requirements better known as cultural norms. Same applies to women who fail at being successful agents. Even if a woman makes a good money, unless she managed to close at least one contract or to produce offspring even without contract, other agents will look down on her and describe her as a failure behind her back. Or if they get into an argument, that will be the first thing they brought up. Now let's examine the agents and their necessary requirements. Here's the list of most common traits. Number 1. Superficial Charm Don't assume that charm goes hand in hand with confidence or arrogance. Their charm is specifically suited to their target. Number 2. Grandiose Self-Perception Number 3. Constant Need for Stimulation Number 4. Pathological Lying Number 5. High Level of Manipulation Number 6. No feelings of guilt. Number seven, shallow emotional responses. Number eight, lack of empathy. Number nine, parasitic behavior. Number ten, impulsiveness and irresponsibility. Now, I didn't make this list, and I'm gonna post a link in the description box to an article titled How to Identify a Psychopath. So, as we can clearly see from this list, Modern day women pass the test with the flying colors and that makes them perfect sales agent for the system and once they close the deal, their job is to monitor the implementation of Triple P by their husbands. Now I'm not saying there are no male cycles out there but this is how women have been collectively molded in order to do a better job for the system. Uh, this is where I'm gonna close the book on female behavior in the context of black pill. And remember, there's no room for rage in Black Pill. You simply identify the truth for what it really is and then you act accordingly. Because when you are in rage, you lose focus and that is not what the warrior should do. You gotta keep focused and aware and that's what the Black Pill is all about. Making you aware and seeing through the bullshit. So you can strategically build your path to liberation. This is the Black Pill.